A key component of the modern world economy, the chemical industry delivers products and innovations to enhance everyday life. It is also an industry in transformation, where chemical executives and workers are delivering growth and industry-changing advancements while responding to pressures from investors, regulators, and public opinion. Discover how leading companies are approaching these challenges here on The Chemical Show. Join Victoria Meyer, president of Progressio Global and host of The Chemical Show, as she speaks with executives across the industry and learns how they are leading their companies to grow, transform, and push industry boundaries on all frontiers. Here's your host, Victoria Meyer. Hi, this is Victoria Meyer. Welcome to The Chemical Show. We recently ranked in the top 10% of podcasts globally, which is super exciting. So thank you for listening and sharing the podcast. And if you have not yet subscribed on your favorite podcast player or YouTube, please do so now and remember to share it with a friend. This week, I am speaking with Patty Summers. Patty is the Global Business Director for Chemicals and Energy at Zeochem. Patty's got a long history in the chemical industry at companies including Spectra Sensors, UOP Honeywell, and ExxonMobil. Um, and we're going to have a great conversation. So welcome to The Chemical Show. Thank you, Victoria. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Glad to have you. So first of all, just tell us a little bit about Zeochem. So Zeochem is a Swiss-based company. Um, we've been making specialty chemicals for over 200 years, so that's pretty exciting. That's we've got three major business groups, uh, molecular sieves, chromatography gels, and deuterium-labeled compounds. They're used in OLED screens for um, cell phones. I think they're going into some of the new curved screen TVs as well. We have production in, um, across the globe. Uh, molecular sieves are made in um, the US, China, and Europe. And as you said, I lead the chemicals and energy business. So I am on the molecular sieve side of things. Cool. Um, so maybe I'm gonna start with a, a question I didn't tee you up with, but uh, what is, <laughs> What the heck is a molecular sieve for those of us that don't know what it is? So molecular sieves are, um, I like to talk about them as, as uh, synthetic sand because it's silica and alumina, but, um, but we build them on the molecular level so that they can act as adsorbents or sponges to absorb certain materials, um, but not everything. And so that's why they're called sieves in that on the molecular level, you are sieving um, chemicals. So you can let in, for example, moisture, but not let in other compounds like um, longer hydrocarbon chains. So in my particular applications that I'm responsible for, we're doing a lot of contaminant removal, but especially um, water removal from hydrocarbon streams. So the sieves are uh, regenerated usually with temperature, but sometimes pressure so that you can use them on a continual basis to take these hydrocarbon streams and purify them um, so they can either be transported in pipelines because you don't want um, moisture and other H2S and things because you do get corrosion. So you can either transport them or they meet the specifications for the customers that you're selling to. Got it. So they kind of take the chemical, clean it up and make it better. Absolutely. That's my simple chemistry. Anyway, so Patty, I know you've been, um, you're running a really global business, right? So uh, you've got responsibility around the world. How have the events of 2020 and 2021 affected your business, right? So we've got everything from the pandemic to supply chain disruptions. We've had power challenges uh, here in the U.S. for a short while, but we're also seeing that around the world. So how is that affecting your business and your markets? It's been very dynamic to say the least. Um, Anybody in the chemical industry around the globe has seen demand destruction, especially initially as everything closed down. Uh, the energy markets were in a state of shock. And our customers, how they operated and how they behaved changed. So many of them had shutdowns. Um, those who did not shut down had reduced rates, production rates. And both of those um, dramatically affected how much molecular sieve they needed and, um, and needed to repurchase. And when you run at reduced rates, the sieves last longer. So it really changed our business, our, our business as a whole. But what's also interesting is how the customer's buying cycle changed. So not only did they need less material, but when they needed it, they had shorter lead times. By the time they got through their purchasing cycle, 
which was longer because they needed, um, in many cases, higher level approval just to be able to spend the money, even if they had budgeted for it. By the time we got the PO, it was a shorter lead time. We had to be faster to respond, which was a little bit of a challenge in a market where things were very unpredictable. It wasn't like we could look at the prior years or even the prior five years and get an order pattern on which to base our production and our forecasting. So Interesting. it was um, a big change. I think, like I said, what was surprised me was the change in the customer's behaviors. Hmm. And are you still seeing that here as we approach the end of 2021 or um, has that level, have they gone back to normals or are we, are we still in kind of a disruptive period for you guys? You know, it is, it's more normal, <laughs> but it is still disruptive. It still can be um, highly unpredictable, but our customers themselves are up and running. They seem to be doing a lot better, of course, with natural gas prices high, with oil prices high, with more drilling and production in the Permian Basin. We are seeing that the market is healthier than it had been, and that's a good thing. We haven't gotten yet to the point where we're really seeing business like it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and we hope we, we get there. But of course, we had a lot of great years in, in the U.S. midstream industry, a huge build out uh, with the whole shale gas. Um, right. I don't expect that we'll get back to those kinds of levels, but um, I'd like to get to a healthier spot. And I think we'll get there. I think yeah. um, natural gas in the energy markets and even petrochemicals and the related fields, it's, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, I know supply chain has been, been a big issue for everybody. And then you talk about how your customers um, have lengthened their approval process, shortened their lead time. And yet we also know supply chain's still a mess, right? I mean, so how are you adapting to that? How are you, how are your, you and your teams adapting your supply chain to be able to respond? Yeah, it's um, that whole thing was such a surprise. I'm not sure any part of it could have been predicted. And it's funny you ask, because I was just thinking back to the very beginning when the ports started to shut down over in China and how we thought it was, at that point, we just thought it was gonna be a China thing. Right. So naturally it went from that to shutdowns around the globe with ships not being allowed into certain ports. So it's, it's so fascinating to look back and see how that changed. Of course, it was painful along the way. So mm-hmm. what have we done? We certainly had to buckle down and just dog it hard. We had to work so hard to stay on top of all the details, what's where, extra planning, but, through that process, I know that we've grown as a company and we're much stronger in our PSYOP processes. Um, even though we had the three manufacturing plants around the globe, and we have a great team, an international team that works well together, we all managed our PSYOP and our production planning a little bit separately. And the pandemic had, and, and the supply chain challenges, through that process, we've grown a lot closer and we now have a single process. We're doing better at forecasting, I mean, even in the crazy world, we're, we're looking out farther. And I think that's the biggest thing. We're looking out farther. We're spending more time on forecasting. We're working together um, as a global team with a very structured process, not only in when during the month we do it and, and all the steps that have to lead up to it. Each week has its own different activity, but we're doing it together as, as a team globally. And I think that's been really good for Zeochem. And I wouldn't be surprised if other companies are doing the same. Sure. Makes sense. I think everybody has to stay a little bit tighter connected uh, inside yes. the company and outside your company. Right. And I do yeah. have to add, if I can interrupt, but not only are we more flexible, but we're thinking more locally again. I mean, certainly the freight rates are just absolutely climbing high. Um, I'm now reading about maybe some demerge charges out on the West Coast. and Those will start mm-hmm. kicking in soon. Of course, I've been trying to avoid those ports, but anyway, we are thinking locally again, you know, I've for a while this. there. Yep. I've, and I've heard even that we may end up migrating to a, a supply and logistics system that is a bit more uh, geographically oriented, right? So geographically oriented north south as opposed to east west. Um, and that this is kind of across, uh, across products and industries that. Um, rather than having to fully cross the ocean. So bringing product from China into the U.S., maybe we're getting it from South America and so that, so that it stays a bit more uh, regionally oriented. I think we'll see. I, th- I think it varies maybe, but. I think there's a lot of truth to that. I do. Yeah. So what, um, so I know there's a lot of discussion these days on the energy transition 
Mm -hmm. What role does that play in your business? Uh, yeah, it's it's funny you talk about that. In fact, I was just re-listening to John Steckla's uh, discussion about the ethylene industry and all the changes he's seen and we've all seen, especially in the U.S. market over the past um, 10 years or so um, with ethylene. And we are heading into a time of big change for mm. the energy business overall. We, we do a lot in natural gas because it does need to be dehydrated, as I said, to go into and purified to go into the pipelines, but also to have the moisture removed for LNG. And I see natural gas and LNG as a transition fuel. As people move away from coal mm. around the globe, um, and before we have a lot of the new developing technologies really taking over the bulk of the energy supply, I see natural gas and LNG filling that gap. So for us in the relatively short term, even five to 10 years, I, I think natural gas is going to be a big player mm -hmm. as the globe makes some of those changes. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see the world through that transition. Um, molecular sieves will play a big part of that. But also there's a lot of talk about hydrogen mm -hmm. and molecular sieves are used in, in those hydrogen applications as well. Again, purifying the hydrogen um, so it can be used in many applications. Yeah, that's interesting. So for you, you're, you're at the, at this moment in time, you guys are a little bit indifferent. You're in the middle of that transition, as you say, going from kind of what people would categorize as dirtier chemistries within energy production into the cleaner stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, and natural gas, obviously for years was viewed as being a very clean energy mm -hmm. producer. It still is, but then of course we're looking now more at, you know, carbon emissions, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to look down the road, but I think there's time for us, given the play that we have in these other applications. Nice. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So let's talk leadership. You have made some um, non-traditional choices in your career, including working part-time for 10 or more years. Um, and that's not something we see happening frequently, particularly in energy and chemicals, um, and particularly with women in leadership roles, right? So you've managed to achieve a lot of success because of, or maybe in spite of that. So tell us a little bit about those decisions and how it's influenced your career. Oh my gosh, that's a great topic. And the funny thing about it is a lot of it was unintentional. I knew I always wanted a family. So that, that part of it was definitely intentional. I knew I wanted to have a family, but I really do enjoy what I do. As I entered the workforce, however, I really, really was looking for a job, not a career. And it just blossomed that way. Um, I, I love engineering because it allows you to do a lot of problem solving. And even right. though I've been on the business side through sales and business development, it's always been a technical sale. I started mm -hmm. out in coatings intermediates and then did a little bit of midstream with um, glycols and amines. But along the way, it was always technically driven and it was always about solving customers' problems. So I love the problem-solving part of it. And so I did often have my own views of what I wanted from management and, and kind of the strategic um, inputs. I could see it. I had this vision. And that's what pulled me into the management roles, that I felt I had something to offer there. Um, and, and that was about it. But along the way, yes, I, I had kids and I didn't want to stop. And I was fortunate enough to have an employer that was working with me on that level. And I said, let me go part-time, I can do this. And it worked very well. I made it a priority. I learned how to prioritize very well. I learned mm. to work the different um, days of the week and other people's schedules hmm. in, in that I knew I had to send off all my requests my third day of the week so that by the time I came back, I'd have those things ahead of, you know, those answers waiting for me so I could Got get it. on to the next. And that's been extremely valuable now that I'm on a global team and I'm working the different time zones. I'm very sensitive to getting things sent so people have them first thing in the morning uh, during their time. So that's really helped. And, and another secret that has worked well for me over the years is just having three top things to do every day. You might get mm. more done, typically not less, but three just always seems so manageable. And so, yeah. um, and sometimes they're big bites. So one item can take you all morning, but I just love the rule of three and just try to get those three things done. So I do think that's, that's really helped me 
um, yeah. in my management, uh, you know, throughout the years. Now, when you start talking about me as a manager, I do set high expectations. I, I expect a lot of people. I think if yeah. you set the bar high, they will be there. But what I do as a manager is I coach, I support, I'm, I'm there with my team. I'm there with them, helping them meet those goals. And we get there, we get there together. Um, I'm very open. I make sure that I explain not only the why, why are we doing something? Because I hate being given a task without understanding yeah. the purpose behind it. It's just, that doesn't work for me. I wanna know the value. And I think especially to link back to the, the staying home factor part-time, I didn't want to waste my time. Yes. And I do remember a vice president once saying, please come to headquarters and work for us in headquarters. And I said, when my time will be well spent and not in so many meetings, I'll consider it. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I just There was a lot of time back in the day that was spent in yeah. a lot of meetings that really didn't, um, they were not as productive as they should have been. We've all seen that evolve. I mean, I think it still happens right now, right? And I think right. I, when I talk to people, they're spending a lot of time in meetings and Zoom meetings, et cetera. And I think it's interesting. I actually think going, the virtual working that we've all been doing a lot of recently, people are blocking more time on calendars to meet and in doing so, maybe wasting some time that, you, you know, taking yeah. 30 minutes when something needed 15 and stuff, which, um, you know, it's maybe one of the, the flip sides of, of the flexibility and virtual working we have is that we're not as effective and efficient with our time. Um, right. and yeah. And, and when you're working part-time and you're trying to deliver, you, you know, you have to, so it yeah. obviously worked out well for you, um, well, thank during you. that time. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I think maybe you've already touched on this in terms of how did, how did that ex influence your leadership style? Does it make you a, a different leader? Like I said, I think so, because I'm very, I'm very focused on time management. I'm very focused on, again, not only the, the why, but what's in it for me, for the team. Yeah. And I guess that's just worked for me. And I, I do try to connect and especially, and that's been especially important with the pandemic, but even before that, because I've had, you know, both at um, Spectra Sensors and here at Zia Chem, global teams, but smaller teams. So it is important yeah. for us to get together, especially during COVID, because everyone is so isolated. Yes. So even just this morning, I had a team meeting, we had no agenda. It was, and we had great, great conversations about work. Um, yes. So there's time for that too, because um, we've got people in different places. So that's awesome. So that's, that's really important good. to me. Yes. And mutual respect is a big part of it because I was so fortunate. I think that's why my part-time worked because the team did respect me and my contributions. That is absolutely a big piece of it, right? That your whole yeah. team has to be committed to that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what's next for Zeochem, right? So I think we're, you know, mm -hmm. we're almost wrapping up the year, which is kind of crazy to think about and moving forward into 2022, um, which I yeah. hope is different than 2021 and 2020 for that matter. So, you know, what's yeah. next for you guys? Well, we are expanding. We're investing, we're spending money on our assets. So we'll, um, we'll be expanding our production, both in Louisville and in Bosnia. And we have a new building that has um, been framed out and walls are starting to go up in the Louisville area. So we, we are investing in, and we're looking to the future in that sense. Um, for me personally, in my business unit, we are developing high performing products. So the goal there is to have products that will last longer for our customers as they mm -hmm. use them so that they minimize the amount of you know, dumping and reloading that they have to do, get longer life. But what I love about this, what I love about products lasting longer is it's got that environmental impact as well, because yeah. you won't have the disposal of that material because after you've thermally cycled it in some applications, it could be four years, some even, even much higher than that, maybe even eight years. But at the end of the day, it, it does, it's life is, it's useful life is over and it does right. need to be disposed of. And right. so I love the fact that with products that will last longer for our customers, they get the benefit of fewer turnarounds to do the reloading and dumping, but it's less disposal, less waste cool. in the environment. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps, I guess, your sustainability and ESG profile and your customers. Um, yes, absolutely. As well. 
Patty, thanks for joining us today on The Chemical Show. We've uh, really enjoyed hearing about you and your career and your experience in, in Zeochem as well. It's a pleasure uh, talking with you, and I'm so happy to be one of your guests. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and thanks to everyone for listening to The Chemical Show. Keep listening, keep sharing, and keep following, and we'll talk to you soon. We've come to the end of today's podcast. We hope you enjoyed your time with us and want to learn more. Simply visit thechemicalshow.com for additional information and helpful resources. Join us again next time here on The Chemical Show with Victoria Meyer.